Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this hour, we'll have the latest on a shooting that happened at a Westside convenience store. The White House sets a new goal in the race to vaccinate more Americans. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with details of where we are in this pandemic coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it's kind of pleasant out there in the 60s. Enjoying that. And lower humidity, too. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is May 5th. That's right, May 5th, uh, Cinco de Mayo. And if we play off the Star Wars, it's also another Star Wars day. It's the Revenge of the... Revenge of the Fifth. And Mike brought yeah. the Dar Darth Vader cufflinks today. You <gasps> did. You did, yes. How appropriate. Yeah, they're looking good. So we'll get a shot coming we'll up shot here. coming mm -hmm. up there. So Yeah, yeah but it is downright gorgeous outside this morning, Mike. Beautiful next couple of days. Yeah, just fantastic. Uh, we got low humidity like you were talking about. Uh, clear skies. It's going to be fantastic this afternoon. And tomorrow's going to be more of the same. So just get outside and enjoy it uh, throughout the rest of today as well as uh, tomorrow. Friday, pretty much so on top of that. Nice view looking off to the west there over to 410 by the airport. 62 degrees right now. That's about the normal low temperature, the, the average low temperature, and we'll continue to drop down a little bit more. You can see mid 50s in the hill country, and we drop down because we have clear skies, hardly any breeze out there right now, and we've got some dry air, so that doesn't hold the heat in. That's going to allow temperatures to, I'm going from 58 for a low temperature when it's all said and done later on this morning. As far as the allergens, molds on the high side, pecan is low and uh, maybe even a light little jacket, sweatshirt, something like that. 58 degrees, clear skies, and it will be breezy at times today. And then a nice warm up. We get up to 83 later on this afternoon. Winds out of the northeast about 10, 20 miles per hour. Like I said, more of the same tomorrow, pretty much on Friday weekend. We'll talk about that later. Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. San Antonio police investigating a shooting that happened in front of a convenience store on the city's west side last night. This happened just before 10 p.m. near Guadalupe and South Hamilton. Police say a man was sitting in front of that store when he was shot in the leg. That man was taken to the hospital and is expected to survive. No word on any arrest right now. The body of a missing 22 year old airman has been found on a beach near Freeport on the Texas Gulf Coast. Airman first cast Elijah, Elijah Posana was last seen swimming at Surfside Beach Sunday. Someone reported seeing him get pull, pulled away by a rip current. Coast Guard suspended the search for Posana Monday afternoon. According to the Brazoria County Sheriff's Office, family members continued to search for him and yesterday morning they found Posana's body on shore about three, four miles northeast of where he was last seen. U.S. Air Force confirmed Passan was on leave from Whitewind Air Force Base in Missouri when the incident happened. An investigation into his death is underway. Today, President Biden is set to deliver remarks about the COVID relief package he signed into law back in March. This as his administration finds new ways to get more Americans vaccinated. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. This morning, a new strategy in the race to vaccinate Americans. The Biden administration shifting focus away from federal mass vaccination sites to a more targeted approach, zeroing in on areas with high demand and low access and communities reluctant to get the shot. We're going to have to bring the vaccine to people who are less eager. Right now, about 32 percent of Americans are fully vaccinated, but demand for the shot is falling. Vaccination is dropping to 2.28 million doses a day from a peak of 3 million. Three Dr. Anthony million Fauci telling CNN. As the pool of people who are unvaccinated gets smaller, it gets a little bit more difficult. And that's the reason why you want to do a modification of strategy. That includes offering incentives to people who get the shot, a chance for a new car in Memphis, free beer in New Jersey. Our new shot and a beer program to encourage eligible New Jerseyans ages 21 and over to get vaccinated. Meantime, more Americans could be eligible for the vaccine any day now. The FDA is expected to soon authorize the Pfizer shots for children 12 to 15 years old. The drug maker also hoping to get enough data from its clinical trials by September to request kids as young as two years old to be vaccinated. Nathan and his three-year-old brother are part of a trial in Texas. I'm very proud of him. And starting Monday, 14-year-old Erilyn and her sister, 15-year-old Ariana, will also join a different trial, excited about doing their part to help fight the pandemic. I don't really like shots. They they scare me a bit. So 
it's better to be able to go through it with someone else. And as for where we are in this fight against the virus, Dr. Anthony Fauci says if this were a baseball game, we would be at the bottom of the sixth inning, meaning more than a year later, we're two thirds of the way through this pandemic. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. And here's an update on coronavirus cases here at home. 165 new cases are confirmed along with one new death. In our hospitals, 223 COVID-19 patients are being treated. 71 are in the intensive care unit and 42 are on ventilators. San Antonio City staff believe they will have enough money to keep helping San Antonio residents with rental assistance into the month of September. More than 34,000 households were able to pay their rent or mortgage or other bills with help from this program. The program also includes county funds for residents outside the city limits. City of San Antonio recently raised the limit on assistance to up to nine months worth of help for people who meet the income criteria. Residents also still have some protection against eviction for non-payment of rent because of a CDC moratorium, which expires coming up on June 30th. San Antonio Spurs will have to do it again tonight after they got lit up by the best in the West of Utah Jazz uh, last night. No, actually, it was the night before in Salt Lake City. The game against the Jazz is set for 8 p.m. tonight, and uh, we will be watching. Go Spurs, go. Yeah, they were off last night, but again, the, uh, the yes. second game is tonight there in Salt Lake. Good luck, guys. That's a tough, tough team right now. 436, about 64 pleasant degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, why an attorney for the former Minneapolis police officer convicted for the death of George Floyd, now asking for a brand new trial. And outside with live cam, yeah, roll those windows down on the way into work or school this morning. It is a beautiful start to our midweek day. Thanks for starting your day with us here on USA. We'll be right back. Just about 440, welcome back. Heavy rain and damaging winds have pummeled large parts of the south, causing tornadoes, sparking a flash flood emergency in Alabama and damaging homes from Texas all the way to Virginia. The storms prompted boat rescues, toppled trees and power lines and raised the threat of flash flooding elsewhere. The Storm Prediction Center says more than 11 million people in parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama and Tennessee, as well as corners of Arkansas and Georgia, are still at an enhanced risk for some of the worst weather. The storms have been responsible for three deaths this week and more than 350,000 power outages from here in Texas to Maryland. A federal judge is ordering the Justice Department to release a memo that advised not prosecuting then-President Donald Trump. The March 2019 memo supported former attorney William Barr's opinion that Trump shouldn't face obstruction charges in matters investigated by special counsel Robert Mueller. The department argued the memo should be kept secret since it was only legal reasoning meant to help Barr make a decision. But a judge said she believed Barr and his advisors had already decided they would not charge the president with a crime. She also said the memo was partly strategic planning, not legal reasoning, and therefore could be made public. An attorney for Derek Chauvin is asking for a new trial. Last month, the former Minneapolis police officer was convicted on three counts in the death of George Floyd, but now one of Chauvin's lawyers filed a motion for a new trial, citing several reasons, including that the verdict is, quote, contrary to the law. The attorney also made allegations of jury misconduct, prosecutorial misconduct, witness intimidation, and the impact of publicity. The lawyer also said the court abused its discretion in not granting a change of venue or sequestering the jury. No word on when the judge will respond to the motion for a new trial. And new photos from the Department of Homeland Security show a sparsely populated border facility. Preliminary data from the U.S. government says encounters at the border were elevated in April, but may have reached a plateau. DHS says during that month, Customs and Border Protection encountered about 6,000 people per day at the border. In March, the daily average was just over 5,500. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas says order crossings are still high, but added progress has been made in bringing down the number of children in Border Patrol custody. Right now it's just about 442, 64 degrees. And still ahead, Amol's, a San Antonio business dedicated to all things Fiesta, but it was hit hard by the economic troubles caused by the pandemic. Up next, how they're rebounding and what's kept them going. Next, when it comes to getting your home renovated, why many homeowners are now becoming frustrated with the process. 
And welcome back. It's about 444. New data shows more people are having problems doing some simple upgrades to their homes. ABC's Zoreen Shah has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, home renovation headaches. For homeowners like Joel Newton, wanting to spruce up their space, finding an expert has not been easy. I mean, the first six or seven were, were so busy they wouldn't even talk with us about the project or the bids were really high. Nice. Newton says he was rejected by numerous contractors before they even stepped inside his Southern California house. And for contractors like Chris Williams, juggling up to 15 projects has become the new normal. Super, super busy. The demand for construction materials in 2020 surged largely on the backs of DIY renovators. But now developers are back in the game, resulting in even more demand. I don't know, you know, when it's going to stop. It just keeps going up and up and up. How you can navigate all these challenges and still complete your project? We have expert advice and tips coming up at 8 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Zoreen Shah, ABC News Los Angeles. The past year has been a fight for survival for local small businesses, especially those that rely on big social events like Fiesta. Now it's 12 on your side. Marilyn Morris shows us there is still worry, but there is also hope. From the piñatas to the papel picado, the colors look brighter. This year, the lights are on. Things are definitely a whole lot better than when we uh, visited a year ago. A year ago, Jeffrey Weiss had to dim the lights on Amos right at his peak season, Fiesta. Worries? Oh, he had plenty. It's basically the biggest two things you could worry about, which was, were we going to survive? And the second was, I was incredibly concerned about the staff, and I did not want to have to lay off anybody. Thanks to the Paycheck Protection Program, Weiss says he didn't have to. But make no mistake, the last year was no party. He says revenues were down 80 percent. To survive, they pinched pennies, got creative with sales, and tapped into credit. Survival is one thing, but for a lot of small businesses, recovery will take longer. In this case, they'll take it one paper flower at a time. I'm guessing you know, we're going to need another 12 months to really get really healthy again. For now, he is heartened to see this customers. Marianne Sullivan missed the Fiesta fun last year. But we're going to do it now, right? Judging by foot traffic, Weiss says there is pent up demand for a celebration. I just think people really, really want to, uh, you know, have fun and have something to look forward to and, and be excited about. It may be a little late, but Fiesta is on and so are the lights. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. It's looking very colorful. I know, right? <laughs> well, we're ready for everything that's gonna happen in the next month or so here in the Alamo City. Well, it's May 5th. We have been in a steam bath lately when it wasn't raining or hailing and this morning. It says about 64 degrees, but with the humidity so low, Mike, it feels more like 54 out there. Yes, yeah, and nice. you know, we'll drop down a few more degrees. By the way, you know, talking about Fiesta, don't forget the porch parade going on right now. Decorate that's your right. porch, take pictures of it, and you can uh, enter and all that. And I there's saw a lot of nice items there for that. I, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Doing a little shopping, so. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, wish this weather could stick around all the way through into fall, but uh, it's not going to. Here's a airplane coming in on runway four. Pardon me, I'm just, you know, the airplane geek. So is Mark, and we're just watching this guy land over 410 right there. FedEx or UPS this early? I'm uh, checking for you, Mike. That's a little blurry, it, but... It is uh, FedEx coming and in. Yep. Grease the landing. All right, anyway, thank you for humoring us. Uh, we got a little bit of a breeze out there this morning. Not too bad. Uh, basically, no wind out in toward the hill country and maybe 5, 10 miles per hour. It'll be a bit breezy at times. This is a very, this graphic kind of tells it all. The dew point temperatures, measure moisture in the atmosphere we always talk about, have gone down basically 15 to 20 degrees compared to this time yesterday after that front moved on through here. So that's how much drier the air is. And it's going to be staying this way for at least the next couple of days. These dew points stay down in the 40s and 50s all the way through the afternoon. Now they'll come up a little bit in the morning, which is a kind of a typical situation. And then in the afternoon tomorrow, still on the low side, going to be very nice. However, wind will start to swing around more out of the southeast going into Friday. That will be the start of the return of the humidity. It'll still be nice on Friday. I think today and tomorrow are the two best days, the coolest mornings and prettiest afternoons. A couple of extra clouds on Friday, but uh, yeah, Friday's still going to be a good one. The weekend, different situation. So we don't have anything as far as any clouds out there right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
And uh, for the next couple of days, I mean, upstream, this is what's in store. Basically nothing out there off to the east. You're going to be hearing about that again. There was that system. That's the same one that moved through here that brought severe weather to the uh, mid south and the deep south yesterday. And it's probably going to touch off a few more showers and thunderstorms well off to the uh, along the eastern seaboard. Pretty good. You know, it's kind of a typical, as we say, spring air pattern. Pretty good uh, conflicting air masses here. Very warm and humid and then much cooler air. 31 right now in Casper, 25 at International Falls. So it's definitely still winter up there to the north. And this is just this little bit of a have a taste of that that we're getting the next uh, couple of days around here. As of right now, temperature is about normal and then throughout the rest of today we will end up mm, just about on the normal side for a high 73 at noon. Plenty of sunshine out there, a little bit breezy at times, but oh, just a really, really nice day. 83 degrees for a high temperature. Mostly clear skies tonight. Do it all over again tomorrow. We start off in the uh, 50s. Get up into the mid 80s and Friday, a couple more clouds around here. Then we get into the weekend and a lot more humidity with all that humidity coming on in here. Probably see a couple of sprinkles around Saturday morning, Sunday morning, upper 80s, Saturday, mid 90s on Mother's Day and plenty of humidity around here. And then a couple of uh, showers here or there on Monday and Tuesday. Not quite as hot. Yes, but the 90s is what we are used to in May, so I guess we should brace for it. <laughs> I don't know if we're used to it. We get stuck with that sometimes. Stuck so. with it. Maybe that's a better way to say it. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 451 on your Wednesday morning. And coming up next, a first look at Disney's attempted attempt to make a Lion King prequel. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, zero, four, zero, Fireball 9. Daily four numbers, 5788, eight, Fireball 3. Cash 5, 5, 6, 13, 23, 33. And your Mega Millions, 4, 27, 32, 57, 63, Mega Ball 22, Mega Plier 3. Good luck. Disney making a prequel to one of its most popular films, plus the boss celebrating another big honor. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Daria Albinger. Director Barry Jenkins is now hard at work on a prequel to The Lion King. The Oscar-winning director of Moonlight and If Beale Street Could Talk is currently filming The Lion King in Los Angeles. A prequel follows King Mufasa and his villain brother Scar in their younger years. Jenkins also wrote the script. He said the young Mufasa reminded him of himself. Disney has not set a release date. Bruce Springsteen is the winner of the 2021 Woody Guthrie Prize, which is given to an artist seen as carrying on the spirit of the folk singer whose music focused on the plight of the poor and disenfranchised. Welcome to Freehold, young man. The New Jersey rocker called Guthrie, who died in 1967, one of his most important influences. As I went forward. Springsteen and previous prize recipient Pete Seeger performed Guthrie's This Land is Your Land at Barack Obama's 2008 presidential inauguration. Springsteen will be honored during a virtual ceremony on May 13th. He's getting a drink of water. And Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, is releasing her first children's book. It's called The Bench, and it's about the relationship between fathers and sons. It's based on her husband, Prince Harry, and their son, Archie, but also features other multicultural families. The book grew out of a poem Meghan wrote for Harry for their first Father's Day after Archie's birth. The Bench comes out on June 8th, just in time for Father's Day. And celebrating birthdays today, singer Adele and anchorman Brian Williams. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Daria Albinger, ABC News. Fiesta Fiesta is set to kick off the festivities on June 17th. The celebration is set to run until June 27th. A reminder that the schedule for events is now laid out online on our website at kset.com. The party with a purpose will be considerably smaller with only about 50 events, but organizers are keeping the spirit alive. You can check out the full lineup again on kset.com. It's good to have a few Fiesta events better yeah, than none. Exactly. I'm, yeah. I'm glad 2021 will have a little bit of a reminder. And, and I think our our station did it. A lot of people with the medals, they, they have the ones from 2020 and they're attaching 
a 2021, you know, sign on there. So oh, nice. It's appropriate. Okay, yeah. <laughs> we'll repurpose the old metals if we need to, right? Yes. <laughs> About three till 64 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the latest on severe weather that is moving across the country and has been responsible for three deaths and thousands of power outages. New information shows the majority of apps used by school districts are sharing student data. We'll tell you who they're sharing it with coming up in Tech Bytes. Okay, let's take a look out at the roads with TransGuide this morning. Uh, pretty quiet right now. There's a look at 1604 and Bandera Road. We're going to check in with Samuel King in our 5 o'clock hour. We'll be right back. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, relentless wind and rain pummels large parts of the south causing tornadoes, flash floods and damaging homes from Texas to Virginia. But here at home, as we look outside with live cam this morning, crystal clear, low humidity. We finally get a break from all that nasty, nasty weather here in South Texas. Good morning, everybody. We made it to midweek. It is Wednesday, May 5th. Thanks for joining us. And I'm already enjoying the nicer weather. I could feel there was less humidity the minute I stepped outside. Oh, we got a break. Last night was gorgeous. This morning, even better. Here's Mike Osterhage with more on our midweek forecast. And this is going to be a perfect opportunity. I know you did yours, what, on Monday, Mark? Cut the grass uh -huh. after, you know, things are going to be growing and everything and kind of kind of clean up around the yard. And it's going to be nice just to be outside, even if it is uh, cutting the grass, because the weather is going to be just so wonderful as it is right now. 61 degrees, so we're little bit below what the average normal temperature low temperature is and we'll continue to drop down a few more notches thanks to that bottom number there the dew points down to 53 it's about oh roughly 20 degrees lower than what it was yesterday at this time nice warm up throughout the day we'll make it up to 83 so we gain about uh, roughly 25 degrees or so throughout the course of the afternoon the aquifer did it continue? It's upward climb. Another nine tenths of a foot. It has gone up uh, just off the top of my head about 15 feet or so in the past um, week and a half, and which is fantastic news, obviously. And the allergens molds on the high side, and we do have a little bit of uh, pecan around here. So we've got a lot of clear skies, and it is just going to be fantastic throughout the rest of today. So clear, kind of coolish this morning. Then throughout the afternoon, Sunny, low 80s, low humidity, a little bit of a breeze here and there. An absolutely fantastic day and same thing tomorrow. So we got two days in a row. Friday is still going to be nice. That's going to be the, the start of the return of the humidity. We'll have a couple more clouds around here. Like I said, it'll still be really nice on Friday. Then we go into the weekend and it is definitely going to be warming up. We are going to see more humidity, a lot more humidity. It's going to be downright hot and humid for Mother's Day. Maybe some sprinkles in the morning. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King is here. Good morning, sir. What's going on? Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. This is a look at Loop 410 at State Highway 151 on the west side. We've had the overnight construction uh, the past few weeks, and this week has been uh, no exception. But the good news is it looks like it is starting to clear. The southbound lanes of Loop 410 had been closed overnight uh, because of that construction from about military. And But you can see the emergency vehicles here. Traffic still being diverted there to uh, the service roads for now, but we're told that this is going to be wrapping up here within maybe the next 10 minutes or so. We're already seeing traffic at the Calabria intersection start to flow. We had some delays up there, uh, but that has been cleared. And that also will mean that things have improved on 1604. We had some slowdowns on 1604 because 410 had been closed overnight, uh, but those have mostly cleared up except right there at 1604 and US 90. Looking at your travel times, looking across uh, the area today, uh, coming in from the west, 19 minutes on US 90 from Castroville, 24 minutes coming in on I-10 from Bernie, 25 minutes coming in on 35 from the Bronfel. So all of those look good this morning. And we'll have another update coming up. Mark, Stephanie. An Eastside home shot at multiple times this morning. The person who pulled the trigger is still on the run. This happened last month and our Stephen Cavassos is live north of downtown this morning. Stephen, was anyone hurt at the time of the shooting? 
Well, Mark Stephanie, thankfully there were no injuries as a result of this shooting, but there are still two questions that remained. Who is the shooter and where is that person now? But that is where San Antonio Crime Stoppers is asking for the community's help. Now, this all happened back on April 8th, and this happened in the neighborhood uh, on an east side community. Again, that neighborhood was out over towards uh, that is uh, Stemminglinger Road near Lord Road, again, near 410 last month. Now, investigators say it was just before 5 that morning when someone opened fire on the home, which was occupied with adults and children. Investigators did speak to a 47-year-old woman who was inside at the house at the time of the shooting. She believes her home was targeted, but it's still not clear why. Crime stoppers are asking for information that can lead to the, any help in identifying the person or persons responsible as well as the location. Now, uh, they also say that that uh, person that actually shot at the home was armed with an assault rifle. If you have any information, you are asked to contact Crime Stoppers 210-224-7867. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. A group of friends collecting running shoes for those in need in honor of their late friend who died in a hit and run crash while she was jogging. 53 year old Lisa Starr Rosenstein loved running and had 27 marathons to her name. San Antonio police say while she was running on the North Loop 1604 West eastbound access road between Lock Hill Selma Road and Northwest Military Highway, they say that she was hit and killed by the driver of a four-door sedan Sunday morning. Now, her friends are keeping her memory alive through a shoe drive where they plan to donate those shoes to those in need. This is something she was passionate about, mm -hmm. something that she loved, and uh, something that would make an impact you know, on the community, which is you know, the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And it would have been, or it is, important to her. Details on the drop-off location for those running shoes can be found on our website at kset.com. In the meantime, investigators are offering a Crime Stoppers reward. They are asking anyone with any information with this case to send their information to 210-224-STOP. Severe weather hitting much of the country from here in Texas all the way to Washington, D.C. includes a flood emergency in parts of the deep south overnight. Millions of Americans are on alert while others are cleaning up the damage. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the latest. Overnight, a flooding emergency unfolding in Alabama as torrential rains hammer the south. The water kept rising at this apartment complex outside Birmingham after heavy rain caused a nearby creek to overflow its banks. They are working to make sure everyone's getting out safely. Rescuers pulling more than 20 people out of the lower level apartment. Gotcha. Residents and pets on the second floor seen waiting on their balconies to see if they'd be rescued too. We are currently not evacuating the second floor. We don't feel like they're in danger at this time. We will continue to reassess the scene and see if at some point, we're going to have to go after those people on the second floor. In Mississippi, a live camera from our Jackson station, WAPT, showing power flashes near the state capitol. And the threat is not over yet. More than 30 million Americans are on alert for damaging winds, tornadoes, and flash flooding from Louisiana to Washington, D.C. The same storms produced at least 19 tornadoes, including this one in Blum, Texas, damaging several homes. The South already facing two tornado outbreaks this month, and it's only May 5th. Forecasters warn more damaging storms are likely in the weeks ahead because May is when severe weather rapidly escalates, especially across the southern and central plains. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, City of San Antonio plans to open six outdoor pools beginning this weekend. Check out the list. The pools at Woodlawn, Southside Lions, Heritage, and Lady Bird Johnson will open Saturday and Sunday from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. They'll also be open Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 5 to 8 p.m. San Pedro Springs and John F. Kennedy pools will be open on Saturdays and Sundays from 1 to 8 p.m. In order to limit capacity, pre-registration will be required along with a COVID screening. We have a full list of protocols for these pools on KSAT.com. The first to close and the last to reopen. Performance venues shuttered during the pandemic, and those venues have been waiting for a lifeline for months. It's a topic of this week's episode of KSAT Explains. KSAT Explains stage set for a lifeline is available to stream on demand now. You can find it at kset.com slash explains or the KSET TV streaming app.
Right now, it is just about 5.09. We're at now 61 degrees. And still ahead, a closer look at why many school districts are using apps that can share student data with third parties. Outside with Lycam, a beautiful start to this Wednesday. Doesn't get much better than this. Uh, the heat will be back, though. We know that. How hot for Mother's Day weekend? Mike will have an update coming up. Now that the pandemic is slowing down, parents are making the decision to send their children back to school for in-person learning. Here's ABC's Marcy Gonzalez with what parents can do to help ease any fears they may have about going back to class. After a year of virtual learning, many students are now returning to the classroom. Along with backpacks and notebooks, some are bringing with them new levels of anxiety. That was the case for Angelica Santos's daughters, who are in second grade and pre-K. Amelia was extremely nervous up until the point when she was walking in, and the same for Amaya. But there were several times where she would come to me and would be like, Mom, I can't do this. Um, and I was like, you can totally do this. I know you can According to one recent poll, 41% of U.S. parents say their child's mental or emotional health has been worse this school year compared to last. 48% say social and behavioral skills have been worse. An abrupt change can be very difficult to navigate. Everyone, I think, just needs to be a little bit more attentive that people are at this heightened level of anxiety right now. Mental health experts say some children may not communicate what they're feeling and suggest parents keep an eye out for possible warning signs. Kids, especially on the younger uh, age group, oftentimes are going to have other complaints, things like headache, stomach ache. You can also notice some clinginess, separation anxiety, these sort of panic symptoms, moodiness, refusal to do things that they might otherwise be okay with doing, um, any kind of acting out. There are helpful resources online. Experts recommend parents lean on those and have an open dialogue with their children. Parents are going to be feeling a lot of the same symptoms that the that the children are, and the more open, you know, to a degree you are with your kids, you can kind of foster this level of communication that's actually going to be therapeutic uh, for the kids. That has been Santos's approach, and so far, she says it's working. Overall, like this hasn't been an easy time, right? Um, but we're learning to adjust. We always refer to each other as like Team Santos. So we're like Team Santos and we're just going to grow stronger together. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 514 and we're at about 64 degrees right now. Why Dell is issuing a security patch for hundreds of computer models going all the way back to 2009. In today's Tech Fights, new concerns over the apps millions of children depend on for remote learning. A report found 60% of school utility apps are sharing kids' data with third-party companies. That includes information like a student's contact list and even their location. Dell has issued a security patch for hundreds of computer models dating back to 2009. It closes a hole that allows cyber attackers to grab full control of the device. The patch covers nearly 400 models, including the company's latest laptops and some gaming devices. Finally, Tinder's new attempt to give you and a match something to talk about. The new Vibes feature is a short quiz that asks simple questions. Your answers will appear in profiles of anyone who has taken the same quiz. Tinder says tests show it increases likes and matches across the board. One question, are you 20 minutes early to places or 10 minutes late? Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. We'll see if anybody's going to be early or late to work this morning. That's right. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. I was seeing uh, what looks like construction maybe at Loop 410 and 151. Well, the good thing is you might be uh, getting there a little bit early now that that construction has just uh, cleared up. We were talking about this at the top of the hour, Stephanie and Mark, that they were about to uh, pick up for the night, and it looks like they have, and so traffic is moving southbound on Loop 410 uh, this morning here at uh, State Highway 151, but this is just going to be something uh, to watch out for uh, over, you know, this week uh, for sure uh, that they're going to have this construction overnight and closing sections of Loop 410. So right now looking at travel times here in Loop 410, a little bit of yellow north of uh, Calabria, but otherwise still seven minutes between I-10 and 151. 
in both directions uh, right now, a little bit slower heading uh, south and westbound on Loop 410 this morning. Otherwise, things are looking mostly uh, OK on the map. This is just uh, some a fire uh, reported there on the uh, west side, but it is showing up on, on our map just to let you know what that icon means. Uh, we had a vehicle fire at North 35 North at O'Connor Road uh, this morning, but you can see not really impacting traffic on 35. And this is also good news for folks that uh, they had to close uh, Loop 410 at FM 78 yesterday evening uh, just because of some emergency bridge work, but they were able to get that completed uh, this morning. So that is reopened. It reopened just uh, before uh, five o'clock. So won't have to worry about that this morning on your morning commute either, guys. Uh, thank you, Samuel. Mike, this is one of those mornings we just have to soak up because before we know it's going to be a thousand degrees outside. <laughs> yep. True. Especially in the afternoon, yeah. you know, when it's going to be so beautiful this afternoon as well as tomorrow. And pretty good on Friday. Friday is going to be sort of transition day, if you will. But uh, one thing we're going to be seeing today is a good looking sunrise. When was the last time we really saw it? Really, you know, one of those just spectacular sunrises, but we should have one uh, this morning and temperatures are just fantastic out there. You know, low 60s, 50s in the hill country, maybe even a light little jacket for some folks. And I know this looks like there's nothing on it, which tells the whole story. This is the water vapor imagery aloft in the atmosphere and it's with this with this very very, very dark shade and then you saw a little bit of that kind of tannish color moving on in here that just means you got some really dry air upstairs in the atmosphere which means we're going to have some beautiful blue skies today not only dry here dry air down here at the surface but also upstairs so dew point temperatures are going to remain below that threshold line of 60 today, tomorrow, and then it starts to come back in here on Friday. And then look what happens over the weekend when those dew points get back up into the mid upper 60s, even some low 70s. So yeah, it's going to be pretty hot and steamy as we go into the weekend, especially, unfortunately, on Sunday. So any well, maybe get togethers for food for mom is going to be on the inside, not outside because it's going to be pretty hot out there. Um, as far as computer model, nothing going on today, tomorrow, Friday. Now, as the humidity comes back on in here Friday night into Saturday, we'll have a lot of clouds starting off Saturday morning, as well as a couple of little sprinkly showers here or there. And then I think we keep a lot of clouds around on Saturday, some sunshine thrown on in there. And of course, temperatures are going to continue to get the heated up and we'll be up in the upper 80s and all that humidity. Humidity Sunday morning, uh, probably a little bit of mist as well scattered about the area. Now, this one particular computer model wants to get a few showers going late Sunday afternoon. Uh, the chances of rain as of right now, and again, still a few days off are not that great, but it looks like with all that heat and humidity on Sunday, the atmosphere is going to be somewhat on the volatile side. So it's one of those situations kind of like a couple of nights ago when the odds of rain were not great, but if something pops and again, this is still a few days off. If something pops on Sunday, it would uh, kind of blow up a little bit and potentially turn strong. But again, few days off, still keep watching that better rain chances come on in here than into Monday as well as on Tuesday of next week. OK, let's just talk about the beautiful weather today because it's going to be gorgeous. 73 degrees at noon, plenty of sunshine out there and a high temperature today up to 83. A little bit of a breeze here and there. And then tonight, beautiful evening. Tomorrow, another great morning, 85 uh, throughout the afternoon, 86 on Friday. A few more clouds. Low temperature still at 60. Nice, but the humidity comes back in here overnight, especially into Saturday. Mm -hmm. A lot more humid sprinkles. Hot and humid this weekend. Now, Mike, this floral arrangement yes. you have in your icon normally mm -hmm. runs thirty nine ninety nine, but it because it's Mother's Day, it's one thirty nine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Get your gifts oh, early. Good, good yeah. luck. Good luck with that. No kidding with that. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Right now, about five twenty two on your Wednesday morning, and still ahead in your morning spotlight, pink set to be honored with a big award plus items from the estate of a Broadway icon that's going up for auction. Here's to the very first influencer in your life. Mom. This is How Mom Shines with 30% off everything at Zales, the diamond store. 
I've lost count of how many asthma attacks I've had, but my new normal with Nucala, fewer asthma attacks. Nucala is a once monthly add-on injection for severe eosinophilic asthma, not for sudden breathing problems. Allergic reactions can occur. Get help right away for swelling of face, mouth, tongue, or trouble breathing. Infections that can cause shingles have occurred. Don't stop steroids unless told by your doctor. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection. May cause headache, injection site reactions, back pain, and fatigue. Ask your doctor about Nucala. Find your new normal with Nucala. Today's entertainment news ranges from movies to music to the Broadway stage. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. It's her. Pink is set to receive the Icon Award at this year's Billboard Music Awards. Pink is a three-time BBMA winner. She's also set to perform on the show May 23rd in Los Angeles. Okay, Items from the estate of Broadway icon Carol Channing are going up for auction. Highlights include her Golden Globe Award for Thoroughly Modern Millie, an original Al Hirschfeld drawing of Channing and George Burns, and her 1968 Distinguished Achievement Tony Award, estimated to bring as much as $30,000. Proceeds from the June 17th sale will benefit Channing's alma mater, Bennington College, and Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. More info at abel.com. I hadn't expected any of it. And Not even a pandemic can keep Julie Andrews down. The American Film Institute had planned to give the Oscar-winning actress its 48th Lifetime Achievement Award in April of 2020. Now the AFI has finally rescheduled the event for November 11th at the Dolby Theater in Hollywood. Despite the delay, knowing Andrews, it'll be practically perfect in every way. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time check exactly 528. We're down to 61 degrees at last check. And still ahead on GMSA, President Biden just set new goals in the country's fight against COVID-19. But can we reach them? We're going to take a closer look. Now you're looking for a good place to celebrate Cinco de Mayo. We have some suggestions for some great food and more importantly, margarita, Stephanie. That's coming up. <laughs> Hi, good morning. Welcome back. It's 531 and it is Wednesday, May 5th. If this morning's weather was a restaurant, I think Mike would say five stars. Mike? I agree. Good way to put it. Yes, indeed. I mean, it just all the superlatives that come to mind because it's going to be, it is fantastic. It's going to be fantastic today as well as tomorrow. A couple of really, really nice days after getting so hot and steamy there for a while. Not going to last forever. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Uh, yeah, beautiful start this morning. Lots of uh, clear skies out there. It's going to be a beautiful sunrise as well. Temperature stands at 61. Dew points at 53. So we've got very dry air in place. A little bit of a breeze out of the north at 7 miles per hour. We'll drop down a couple of more degrees uh, this morning. So even in the hill country, we've got some low 50s right now. Maybe a light little jacket, a sweatshirt, something like that. 62 at Randolph, 64 at Stinson. And, uh, well, they got a lot of mold hanging around out there. But as the air continues to, the drier air stays in place in the next couple of days, that should uh, continue to drop down. Now, as far as the rest of today, plenty of sunshine out there. Nice warm-up will gain uh, overall about 25 degrees throughout the course of the day. 73 at noon, 83 for a high temperature. A little bit of a breeze here and there, and then clear skies. Again, we do it all over again tomorrow. Nice, pleasant morning, beautiful afternoon. Pretty much so on Friday, but that's going to be the transition into the weekend. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King, what's going on, sir? Hi, good morning, Mike. Things looking pretty quiet at the moment here across the roads. Not too uh, many incidents, but there is one to uh, tell you about. Just something to look out for on the northeast side. We're talking about uh, vehicle fire still uh, on the scene here. At I-35 North at O'Connor Road. So that's just something to look out for. Again, not really impacting the highway too much at the moment. So hopefully that gets cleared up pretty soon. Looking at some travel times from across the region, everybody in the green, which is what we like to see, including 17 minutes and I-35 coming from the south from the Lytle area and then 25 minutes in from New Braunfels, 26 minutes coming in from Bulverde this morning. And let's take a look at Transguide. This is 37 at Houston. Traffic flowing well there, as is Loop 410 at San Pedro. And we will have another update coming up. Mark, Stephanie.
Thank you, Samuel. New this morning, police are investigating a crash involving three vehicles overnight. It happened around 3 a.m. in the 100 block of Marsha Place, just off Broadway in the Alamo Heights area. Officers tell us that a woman was driving in the area and ended up hitting a parked car. That caused her to roll the vehicle into another parked SUV. The woman had to be extracted by Alamo Heights firefighters. She was checked out by EMS but was not hurt. Police say alcohol was not involved in this crash. More than 106 million people here in the United States are fully vaccinated against COVID-19, but CDC data shows the average daily pace of vaccinations is still slowing. In spite of that, President Joe Biden setting a bold new goal for shots in arms. CNN's Britt Conway reports. We're still vaccinating millions of Americans every day. Now, where do we go from here? President Joe Biden wants to see 70% of adult Americans with at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine by July 4th. He's focusing on three areas to increase vaccination rates. First, vaccinating kids 12 to 15 years old once there's an approved vaccine for them. Not only do we want to get it done in time for school, we want to get it done in time so kids can really enjoy their summer activities without having to worry, without having to wear masks. Now, vaccine advisors have scheduled an emergency meeting for next Wednesday as the FDA reviews the Pfizer vaccine for that age range. The second focus, making it easier to get vaccinated. You want to do a modification of strategy. Which means getting away from mass vaccination sites. And really putting in walk-in capabilities in 40,000 or so pharmacies throughout the country, getting mobile units going. The third focus, overcoming vaccine hesitancy by getting the word out and changing the narrative. I want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Ambitious for sure, but the White House says there's no plan B here. It's a stretch goal, but it's an achievable goal. It just needs to be easier. I think we're going to be able to do it. I mean, it's a challenging goal, but I think it's a doable goal. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Facebook says it will announce today whether it's banning former President Donald Trump permanently. The company's oversight board is making that determination. It's a group made up of uh, some who people regard uh, of who some people regard rather as legal experts and human rights leaders. Facebook cited, quote unquote, public safety as the reason when it indefinitely banned the former president four months ago. Critics say the social media giant should focus on free speech. A SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket has blasted off from the Kennedy Space Center carrying 60 satellites for the company's Starlink broadband network. This marks the 26th dedicated Falcon 9 rocket launch. It brings Elon Musk's SpaceX closer to 2,000 Starlink satellites in low Earth orbit. The goal is to use them to provide Wi-Fi internet to the entire world. That service is already functioning in certain areas for a limited amount of beta users. After liftoff, the rocket's boosters landed on a recovery drone ship in the Atlantic. That landing marked the ninth successful recovery for this type of rocket hardware. Recoverable boosters are key to Elon Musk's goal of cutting the cost of space travel. Christie's Auction House giving you the chance to buy a bottle of out-of-this-world wine. The private company Space Cargo Unlimited sent 12 bottles of French wine to the International Space Station, where they spent more than a year. The bottle of Petrus 2000 originally sold for $10,000, but Christie's now estimates it'll go for a cool $1 million. The space wine comes with a second bottle of the same vintage aged on Earth in a cellar. That way, if the buyer decides to open the space wine, they can compare them. The wine also comes with a corkscrew made from a meteorite and a trunk design with, uh, inspired by Star Trek and Jules Verne proceeds go to more space research by Space Cargo Unlimited. Interesting. Time now, 537 and about 63 degrees right now. As we've seen already, spring showers can only bring May flowers, but lots of flash flooding. Just ahead, we have some key ways to keep your home safe and dry. And too much of a good thing, unfortunately for us, <laughs> there are limits to the amount of coffee you can drink. Up next, how to know when to stop so it doesn't mess up a good night's sleep. Outside with live camp, just about picture perfect weather out there this morning. Doesn't get much better than this, but we know the heat will return. When will it make a comeback? We'll talk to Mike and Samuel King is standing by with a look at your Wednesday morning commute.
540, welcome back. We're not playing around here on GMSA. This is the way many of us start the morning with a nice mini keg of coffee. In <laughs> fact, the FDA says about four in five U.S. adults consume caffeine every single day. And this is just portion one for me. <laughs> <laughs> but as CNN's Mandy Gaither reports, it's important to know how much is too much and when to stop so your sleep isn't affected. You listening to this? Mm -hmm. For many, it's a way to jumpstart the day, but caffeine has its downsides. There's definitely some health benefits, but there's also some drawbacks if people take in too much. Consuming too much caffeine can make you jittery and anxious, increase heart rate, cause an upset stomach, nausea, or headache. It can also lead to insomnia. Probably everybody knows somebody who can drink coffee and then go to bed an hour or two later. Liz Wynandy, a registered dietitian at the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center, says caffeine affects people differently. So how much is too much can vary person to person, depending on body weight, medications, and sensitivity. Not drinking ca coffee after uh, noon, around 12 p.m., is a good idea to make sure that it's out of a person's system almost entirely by the time they go to bed. For healthy adults, the FDA recommends no more than 400 milligrams a day. That's about four or five cups of coffee. My Nandy says it should be spread out, not consumed in one sitting. And if you think you're taking in too much, cut back gradually. So maybe tapering down over a week is ideal. If someone decides to go cold turkey, it's it's really, you know, most people are going to have a headache. They'll have some increased drowsiness, but usually that only lasts for a couple of days. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. <laughs> Sometimes when I, I can tell I've had too much, I get the shakes in my right hand. Really? Like I just got out of a battle. You know, like a, uh, That's you, when it's time to, to pull back, back a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and you said that caffeine doesn't really affect you. You no. can go right to bed? Yeah, I can go right to sleep. I could probably have a cup of coffee and, and go to bed. Let's look at her. That's amazing. I wish we had that ability. <laughs> 542, about 61 degrees. And coming up next today in... Cinco de Mayo, so we're going to have some suggestions on some of the best ways to celebrate, including where to get some authentic food and some tasty margaritas. And welcome back. It's about 545 in your morning consumer headlines. Krispy Kreme getting ready to go public. The donut company says it has filed paperwork related to a public offering of its stock with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Krispy Kreme has been private since 2016. The company says the number of shares that will be offered and their price has not been determined. A new very short video posted by Disney appears to show a more uh, realistic looking lightsaber. Take a look at this. I'm going to watch with you now. Fans have been clamoring for a more authentic lightsaber since the original Star Wars debuted in 1977. That one looks pretty good. Yeah. Uh, this video is sure to make you ask, how do they do that? So far, there are no plans to sell the device immediately. Instead, performers will showcase it at the company's Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel. That is set to open next year at Florida's Disney World. And the day after Star Wars, of course, is Revenge of the Fifth, right? No, it's Cinco de Mayo. Every year on the 5th of May, Americans celebrate Mexican-American heritage and pride. The United States Congress issued a proclamation in 2005 calling on all Americans to observe Cinco de Mayo. Most people do so by enjoying a Mexican-themed meal and drinks like tacos and margaritas. If you're looking for a place to party responsibly for Cinco de Mayo, seen on KSAT's Texas Eats, La Gloria will be celebrating its 11th birthday today with live music and face painting at Burger Teca. La Gloria is a place that was created to celebrate the rich and delicious street foods from interior Mexico. La Gloria's margarita featuring El Jimador Tequila was also voted number one in San Antonio. Check out more about all that on KSAT. Com. Well, usually spring showers bring us flowers, but they can also bring flooding and, of course, water damage. In this morning's Ask Angie segment, GMSA producer Rosalind Jimenez has some of the best ways to keep your home safe and dry throughout the rainy season. And here are the details. Here in San Antonio and the surrounding areas, we have seen a lot of rain. If your basement has ever flooded or you have experienced any type of water damage, you know just how stressful it can be. But there are ways to prevent it. When it comes to preventing rainwater damage, prevention is key. Be sure to keep your gutters and downspouts clean. This will allow the rain from storms to flow freely and not pool up 
against your house or inside it. Downspouts should direct water at least three feet away from your foundation. While cleaning your gutters and maintaining your downspouts can be a little annoying, they're relatively simple and inexpensive tasks that can make a big difference. Before rainy season comes, you should also think about your yard. The shape of your flower beds or the slope of your yard could make a huge difference in whether water issues can crop up. When rainwater does come, watch where it collects around your house and if necessary, consider regrading your lawn or installing a French drain. Floodwaters can sneak into cracks in your foundation. This is an open invitation for water damage. If these issues aren't identified and repaired quickly, they can result in some major concerns. Take a close look at the exterior of your foundation, basement walls, and floors on a regular basis. If you come across any small cracks during your inspection, fill them with epoxy. If leaking continues or you encounter a more serious problem with your foundation, be sure to bring in a pro. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Roslyn Jimenez. It's about 10 till 6. Go ahead and check back with Samuel King. The last time we checked with you, not too many problems on the road. No, things looking uh, mostly okay uh, this morning. Maybe you'll encounter some of the delays here and there, but nothing uh, really major to slow down your commute at the moment. We know that can change quickly or at any moment, but something that is affecting people is downtown this week. This is a Commerce Street between Flores and Laredo. Uh, they're doing some work, adding sidewalks and the like here, and you might have noticed that if you work in the uh, downtown area, that's supposed to uh, last for another week or so, and we'll have more uh, on this project and what's going on there tomorrow morning on GMSA. So we we'll hope you'll be there with us to tomorrow as well as you are every day. Looking at 35 between downtown and the northeast side, 9 to 10 minutes in each direction, and then heading from the southwest side into downtown, 10 minutes and then 10 minutes out the other way. And here is a look at Transguide 35 at Flores. Traffic building a little bit this morning downtown, but flowing well at the moment, guys. That is good news. Back to Krispy Kreme story. Yes. Okay. We talk about this all the time. Krispy Kreme or Shipley? Oh, do we have to pick? I was going to say both. Yeah, both. <laughs> There's room in the of car course. for both. Of course. Or you get one box and I get the other. <laughs> I'm Shipley's man. Yeah. Samuel, what do you think? Well, I, I, I'm still judging Shipley's because I haven't, you know, like you yeah. want to support the local thing, but, mm -hmm. you know. I, there's I'll, years of history with Krispy Kreme. And there's only a little bit. With then, Shipley, okay, I've, so. I've got a solution. Mark, go run, get some Shipley's right now. And then so just for, for Sam. Yeah, of yeah. course. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> Steph can hold down the fort. Uh, this was from a couple of evenings ago and a really, really cool picture in some of the storm clouds uh, and the lightning off in the, the background. It's just a neat picture I wanted to show you. This morning, we don't have anything out there as far as any clouds. A lot of clear skies. We should have a fantastic sunrise. Traffic over there, 410, looking off to the east, is moving along very well. And again, we've got some really dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. So low humidity here at the surface, low humidity upstairs. Everything is just fantastic and we will keep the low humidity for the next couple of days, but it is definitely going to make a return as we go in toward the weekend and the heat's going to be coming back as well. So this morning we're starting off with temperatures in the, the low 60s, which is about the average, the, the normal temperature, if you will, and high temperatures are going to be in the low 80s today, mid 80s tomorrow. Just fantastic weather, but it is definitely going to start to heat up again going on into the weekend. And um, obviously for the next couple of days, we've got nothing but clear skies and sunshine out there all the way through tomorrow. Maybe a couple of extra clouds around on Friday, especially in the morning. And we'll start to see, notice the wind lines coming in here out of the southeast on Friday. That'll be the beginning of the return of the humidity. So it's still going to be a nice day on Friday. Maybe a little bit more humidity. I think today and tomorrow are going to be the best of the rest of the week, but still Friday is a pretty good one. Then moisture comes back in here definitely overnight into uh, Saturday, all the humidity. And with that extra moisture getting pumped on in here, we'll probably have a couple little sprinkly showers to start off the day on Saturday. Sunshine and clouds mixed in together. And then Sunday, about the same situation early Sunday morning. A couple of sprinkles are possible, even though it's not depicted on this computer model. This one, though, wants to scare up a few showers late Sunday. It's possible, not buying into it yet, but one thing we'll have to watch out for late on Sunday, though, is the fact that the atmosphere is going to be very unstable. So uh, if something were to pop up, which is not a great chance right now, could be a stronger storm late Sunday. Still a few days off, obviously. Better chance of rain, though, then comes in here by Monday, Monday and Tuesday. We've got a shot at a couple of showers today. However, 
just go outside, roll down the windows, enjoy it. It's going to be so beautiful out there. 73 degrees at noon. You might actually need a little bit of a sweatshirt this morning with temperatures down in the low 50s in the hill country. 83 for high temperature, kind of breezy here and there. Tomorrow we start off 50s again and then get up into the mid 80s, almost a 30 degree warm up. Friday is still going to be a nice day. Again, probably not as perfect as today and tomorrow. Then the humidity will start to come back in here, especially overnight Friday into Saturday. Sprinkles in the morning as well as on Sunday on Mother's Day and it's going to be hot and steamy on Mother's Day. Chance of rain Monday and Tuesday. Hey, before I forget, I want to mention uh, congratulations to San Antonio Missions. They won their home op opener last night over the Corpus Christi Hooks. Oh, awesome. I think the, sc the score was seven to three. Nice. Seven to three. So the missions starting out on a positive note right now. It's 553 on your Wednesday. Let's go ahead and take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, zero, four, zero, fireball nine. Your daily four, five, seven, eight, eight, fireball three. Cash five, five, six, 13, 23, 33. And we also have your uh, mega millions four, 27, 32, 57, 63, mega ball 22, mega flyer three. Good luck. As we wrap up this half hour, we want to tell you about a pet who needs a home over at the San Antonio Humane Society. Galaxy is a beautiful and energetic one-year-old retriever mixed girl transferred from ACS and would love nothing more than for you to take her home. Just look at that sweet face and that, that uh, tongue is wagging. Uh, she has an overall happy personality. This young girl will do best in a very active household. For more information on Galaxy, call 210 226-7461 or please visit sahumane.org and we hope Galaxy finds a home right here on GMSA. Well today on GMSA at 9, Katie Science Lab going back to basics with a classic science experiment, dropping Mentos into a bottle of Diet Coke. Katie Blake explains the science behind the reaction today at 9. Glad you're with us on this Wednesday morning. Working the overnight shift could put your health at risk. Ahead on GMSA, we'll tell you why night shift workers may be more vulnerable when it comes to the coronavirus. Trans Guide, we've had fairly steady traffic all morning long. Case in point, 410 at 151. Lots of traffic coming at you and headed the other direction. Samuel will get us updated and we'll get another look at the forecast coming up. The White House sets a new goal in the race to vaccinate more Americans. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with details of where we are in this pandemic coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, go ahead and step out and enjoy that lower humidity. We're in the 60s this morning. I'm very happy about that. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now and our viewers will be too it is a beauty out there good morning it is uh, wednesday it is may 5th thanks for joining us today a lot of people might have some outdoor plans at being cinco de mayo yeah. oh today's a perfect day to mm -hmm. go out for brunch lunch dinner whatever you want to do just make sure it's on a patio somewhere mike yes. goes to yes and, and roll down the windows you know mm -hmm. it's funny because just what 15 minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, nothing was really showing up on this uh, live cam picture, but look at the view there. Oh my goodness, we're starting to see the glow of the morning sunrise. It is just spectacular out there. And uh, temperatures, even out in the hill country, got some uh, 50s out there. Uvalde at 58 degrees, 63 Del Rio Carrizo Springs. And uh, even in the uh, northwest portions of the hill country, it's down in the low 50s right now. So, yeah, you can roll down the windows, but you might actually need a little bit of a light jacket, a sweatshirt this morning. Mold is on the high side, low amounts of pecan. And throughout the rest of today, temperatures uh, will drop maybe a couple of notches here. In there and then we'll start to warm up quite nicely. It's going to be a bit of a breeze today, not overly windy though. Still perfect weather to sit outside. 73 at noon, plenty of sunshine and a high temperature with all this nice low humidity out there as well. Up to 83. Tomorrow's going to be another fantastic day. Friday sort of transition day. The weekend, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Traffic Authority Samuel King, it's been pretty quiet up to now. What's going on, sir? Yeah, pretty uh, quiet, Mike. Good morning to you. Good morning to everyone out there. This is uh, Loop 410 at State Highway 151. Had some construction overnight. It wrapped up about an hour ago, and people are getting going there for sure uh, this morning here on the uh, west side. Of course, we're going to have this construction overnight at least uh, this week. Portions of Loop 410 closed, but 
uh, not closed at the moment. Stuff is uh, flowing. Otherwise, uh, things looking pretty good across uh, the board on the map, including up here in uh, New Braunfels. So no delays if you're heading uh, north to San Marcos in Austin or south into San Antonio. For instance, 26 minutes now on 35 into downtown San Antonio, 29 minutes coming in from Seguin and 28 minutes coming in from the Pleasanton area on 37. And again, here is 410 at 151. We'll have another update coming up. Thank you, Samuel. And San Antonio police are asking for help in finding the person who shot at an east side home multiple times. This happened back on April 8th around 5 a.m. at Semlinger and Lord Road near 410. That's where investigators say someone opened fire at the house with kids and adults inside. Investigators also say the person who shot at the home was armed with an assault rifle. If you have any information on this shooting, you're asked to call the number on your screen. That is 210-224-STOP. And police are asking for your help in finding the person responsible for a deadly hit and run. 53 year old Lisa Starr Rosenstein loved running and had 27 marathons to her name. Her friends knew her as fierce, but also a loving woman who was passionate about helping others. Police say that she was struck and killed by a driver of a sedan on Sunday morning while she was running along North Loop 1604. That was between the Axis Road of Lock Hill Sema and Northwest Military High. Highway. Now her friends are sharing her legacy through a shoe drive where they plan to donate the shoes to those in need. This is something that she was passionate about, mm -hmm. something that she loved, and uh, something that would make an impact you know, on the community, which is you know, the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And it would have been, or it is, important to her. Details for the drop-off location for those running shoes can be found on our website at KSET.com. In the meantime, police, they are offering a Crime Stoppers reward for this case as well. Again, that number is on your screen. Now, to update on the coronavirus here at home, 165 new cases confirmed along with one new death. More than 3,300 people have died in Bear County since the pandemic began. And over in our hospitals, there are 223 COVID-19 patients, 71 are in the intensive care unit and 42 are on ventilators. The popular rental assistance program created amid this pandemic still has funding. City staff believe they will have enough money to keep helping San Antonio residents into September. More than 34,000 households were able to pay their rent or mortgage and other bills with the help from the program. The program also includes county funds for residents outside city limits. The city recently raised the limit on assistance to up to nine months worth of help for people who meet the income criteria. But the program isn't without its issues with landlords who want to evict tenants. City staff say they have had to reach out to recipients and tell them not to move out, that their application is being processed. Residents also still have some protection against eviction for non-payment of rent because of, of a CDC moratorium, which expires on June 30th. Today, President Biden is set to deliver remarks about the COVID relief package he signed into law back in March. This as his administration finds new ways to get more Americans vaccinated. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. This morning, a new strategy in the race to vaccinate Americans. The Biden administration shifting focus away from federal mass vaccination sites to a more targeted approach, zeroing in on areas with high demand and low access and communities reluctant to get the shot. We're going to have to bring the vaccine to people who are less eager. Right now, about 32 percent of Americans are fully vaccinated, but demand for the shot is falling. Vaccination is dropping to 2.28 million doses a day from a peak of 3 million. Dr. Anthony Fauci telling CNN. As the pool of people who are unvaccinated gets smaller, it gets a little bit more difficult. And that's the reason why. You want to do a modification of strategy. That includes offering incentives to people who get the shot, a chance for a new car in Memphis, free We're beer in New Jersey. Our new shot and a beer program to encourage eligible New Jerseyans ages 21 and over to get vaccinated. Meantime, more Americans could be eligible for the vaccine any day now. The FDA is expected to soon authorize the Pfizer shots for children 12 to 15 years old. The drug maker also hoping to get enough data from its clinical trials by September to request kids as young as two years old to be vaccinated. Nathan and his three-year-old brother are part of a trial in Texas. 
I'm very proud of him. And starting Monday, 14-year-old Erilyn and her sister, 15-year-old Ariana, will also join a different trial, excited about doing their part to help fight the pandemic. I don't really like shots. They, they scare me a bit, so it's better to be able to go through it with someone else. And as for where we are in this fight against the virus, Dr. Anthony Fauci says if this were a baseball game, we would be at the bottom of the sixth inning, meaning more than a year later, we're two thirds of the way through this pandemic. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. Just about 6.08 on your Wednesday morning. And our San Antonio Spurs getting ready for a rematch with one of the best in the West. We're gonna have a preview just ahead. Breastfeeding offers many health benefits to your child, but did you know it could play a role in their intelligence? Next on GMSA, how breastfeeding could lead to your child scoring higher on tests. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are actually at about 60 degrees. That's pretty nice for a Wednesday morning. Go out outside and enjoy it. That's my recommendation. And we're looking forward to a beautiful afternoon as well. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's about 611. Breastfeeding provides many healthy benefits to your baby. And according to a brand new study, babies who are breastfed tend to score higher on tests. The findings suggest the longer the children were breastfed, the higher their scores. Babies who were breastfed for even just a few months from birth tend to have a higher IQ, but researchers found any amount of breastfeeding had a positive cognitive impact. The strongest association was in children who were breastfed more than a year. Researchers say this is because key nutrients that contribute to healthy brain development are found in breast milk. Now that the pandemic is slowing down, parents are making the decision to send their children back to end the school year with in-person learning. Here's ABC's Marcy Gonzalez with what parents can do to help ease any fears they may have about going back to class. After a year of virtual learning, many students are now returning to the classroom. Along with backpacks and notebooks, some are bringing with them new levels of anxiety. That was the case for Angelica Santos's daughters, who are in second grade and pre-K. Amelia was extremely nervous up until the point when she was walking in, and the same for Amaya. But there were several times where she would come to me and would be like, Mom, I can't do this. Um, and I was like, you can totally do this. I know you can According to one recent poll, 41% of U.S. parents say their child's mental or emotional health has been worse this school year compared to last. 48% say social and behavioral skills have been worse. An abrupt change can be very difficult to navigate. Everyone, I think, just needs to be a little bit more attentive that people are at this heightened level of anxiety right now. Mental health experts say some children may not communicate what they're feeling and suggest parents keep an eye out for possible warning signs. Kids, especially on the younger uh, age group, oftentimes are going to have other complaints, things like headaches, stomach ache. You can also notice some clinginess, separation anxiety, these sort of panic symptoms, moodiness, refusal to do things that they might otherwise be okay with doing, um, any kind of acting out. There are helpful resources online. Experts recommend parents lean on those and have an open dialogue with their children. Parents are going to be feeling a lot of the same symptoms that the, that the children are. And the more open, you know, to a degree you are with your kids, you can kind of foster this level of communication that's actually going to be therapeutic uh, for the kids. That has been Santos's approach. And so far, she says it's working. Overall, like this hasn't been an easy time, right? Um, but we're learning to adjust. We always refer to each other as like Team Santos. So we're like Team Santos and we're just going to grow stronger together. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. Our Spurs set for a rematch against the high-powered Utah Jazz tonight. Tip-off at 8 o'clock. Their last meeting just a couple of nights ago in the same building. The Jazz sit at second place in the West, tied with Phoenix for the one seed. Spurs, on the other hand, sitting in the 10th spot out West. Mathematically, the Spurs can still maybe make the postseason, but they'll need every win they can get. There's only like eight games left, including tonight. We'll see if they can figure out a way to beat those guys tonight in Salt Lake. Good luck. Yeah, good luck. Hopefully they'll do well. I just want to see them happy again, like when they were winning and they had smiles on their faces. We have to may have to wait till after tonight's game. It's <laughs> going to be a, another very tough game. That, that's very true. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King for now.
Well, what is not too tough at the moment is uh, traffic. Traffic time's looking good. We mentioned Pleasant at the top of the hour, still 28 minutes. 19 minutes coming in from Cashville to downtown on Highway 90 and 17 minutes from the Lytle area on I-35. And again, looking at the map, things looking good across uh, the area, Elmendorf, Converse, and we'll take you up here to uh, Bernie and Holotus, Leon Springs. Uh, everything looking uh, fine this morning. Maybe a few delays on 46 here uh, between uh, uh, Bernie and the other in Kamau County there uh, going over to Kamau County, but things looking fine. And here's a look at Transguide I-10 at Frio. That is flowing well this morning, as is 90. We mentioned them in Loop 410. Uh, things looking good as well. So uh, beautiful sunrise to start today, too, and not going to have too many traffic issues at the moment. But we know uh, that can change in the next hour or so. So just be prepared for that. <laughs> what are you looking at, Mike? You all, uh, both of you all sound like, boink, boink. Oh, we were just, like, we were. I was looking on, to so. see what was behind you. You. Yeah, and yeah. it reminds me that you know the kids are going to go back to school yeah. today, and they can enjoy the weather while they wait for the bus. A little history lesson. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sixty years ago today, anybody have an idea? Uh, okay, May fifth. You're younger than years. sixty, so it's not your birthday. <laughs> no, it's not my birthday. What was it? <laughs> Alan Shepard, the first American in oh. space, uh -huh. did the suborbital oh. flight oh. in the Mercury capsule. And a little known story, and do you remember from the movie uh, The Right Stuff, where they had some delays and he was lying there in the, the mercury capsule mm -hmm. and said, um, Guys, I need to go to the bathroom. Yeah, I, I have to, you know, take a little pit stop there. And they're like, ah, uh, so he had to just kind of mm -hmm. go. <laughs> Improvise. They didn't Today know in NASA history with Mike Osterhage. <laughs> of, of all the things they thought about, and that's one thing they didn't think about there. Yeah. But yeah, right. and it, so. And the rest they say is history. All right, uh, so you can talk about that on your bus ride into school this morning and impress your friends. So uh, we've got the temperatures will drop down a couple of more degrees and lots of clear skies. As Sam was pointing out, the beautiful uh, sunrise going on right now. And then 83 for a high temperature today. An absolutely fantastic day. Roll down the windows. Step outside. This is a very cool picture from a couple of evenings ago when we had those some of those uh, thunderstorms there. Mr. Uh, McClellan, usually taking the pictures around Woodlawn Lake, shot this one there. And how neat looking. It's a great shot. Thank you very much for that. Speaking of beautiful, wow. I mean, that's just fantastic, that sunrise this morning. We are down to 60 right now here in town. Low 50s in parts of the hill country. Stinson at 63. So, yeah, out there around uh, Kerrville Comfort, Light jacket, sweatshirt's not a bad idea. Dew point temperatures, measure moisture in the atmosphere. That's the uh, kind of the, the threshold line. The magic number is 60, so we're below that. It's going to stay below 60 for the next couple of days, and that's going to allow, once again, temperatures to be on the coolish side again tomorrow morning and very comfortable throughout the afternoon. Yesterday, we did muster 85, 87 Pleasanton, and some 90s, a lot better than a couple of days ago. Remember when uh, Catula and Laredo were up around 108, 109? Nothing like that yesterday, nothing like that today. As a matter of fact, I think we may be just a degree or two lower than yesterday's high temperature, given the fact we've got a, a cooler start than where we started off yesterday when we were in the low 70s. Nothing going on in the satellite picture, obviously, and you look outside and don't see any clouds anywhere. Off to the east, they had severe weather around the uh, deep south and mid-south yesterday. That whole storm system, the same one that brought us some nasty weather a couple of evenings ago, is continuing to work its way out, so maybe along the eastern seaboard. Uh, upstream, there's really nothing going on as far as uh, we are concerned. So again, we've got great weather today, great weather tomorrow, pretty much so on Friday. That'll store to be sort of be transition day. And then the weekend, well, we'll wait for the seven day graphic on that one. 73 degrees today, sunny skies at noon, 83 high temperature. Absolutely beautiful. Just to open up the windows, let the house kind of air out a little bit. Sit outside, take your lunch outside today. Tomorrow, 58 starting off, 85 in the afternoon. A couple of more clouds on Friday, and especially late in the day, we'll start seeing the humidity kind of come on in here, and then a lot of humidity overnight into Saturday. Sprinkles in the morning as well as Sunday. We're going to have to watch out Sunday afternoon. What? Just uh, there's the atmosphere is going to be pretty unstable. All the heat and humidity out there, mm -hmm. oh, not you. a really good chance of rain, but something pops like a couple of days ago. We'll have to watch out for that. Still a few days off and then some rain chances starting off the week. Well, we will focus on today. Soak this yeah. up because I said earlier <laughs> in about a month, it's going to be 12,000 degrees outside. So you basically. are correct about that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will enjoy today. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mike. Right now, 620, about 60 degrees. And Tinder is launching a new feature called Tinder Quiz. Next, how the app says it will increase your chances on finding your other half.
My cholesterol is borderline. I figure I can worry about it or do something about it. Garlic helps maintain healthy cholesterol safely and naturally. It's odor and taste free with guaranteed potency. I'm taking charge of my cholesterol with garlic. Hey fellas, we've got to talk. Mm -hmm. It's about your food. It has spray on flavor and powdered meat. It's time for fresh food that belongs in the fridge next to our food. Now, who's hungry? Fresh Pet. Dawn Antibacterial cuts through tough grease with 50% less scrubbing. It also removes 99% of bacteria from your hands. Dawn Antibacterial. An easy way to clean your dishes, a smart way to wash your hands. Age before beauty? Why not both? Visibly diminish wrinkled skin in just two days. Crepe Corrector Lotion, only from Gold Bond. Champion your skin. In this morning's GMA First Look, home renovation headaches. For homeowners like Joel Newton, wanting to spruce up their space, finding an expert has not been easy. I mean, the first six or seven were, were so busy they wouldn't even talk with us about the project or the bids were really high. Nice. Newton says he was rejected by numerous contractors before they even stepped inside his Southern California house. And for contractors like Chris Williams, juggling up to 15 projects has become the new normal. Super, super busy. The demand for construction materials in 2020 surged largely on the backs of DIY renovators. But now developers are back in the game, resulting in even more demand. I don't know, you know when it's going to stop. It just keeps going up and up and up. How you can navigate all these challenges and still complete your project? We have expert advice and tips coming up at 8 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Zoreen Shah, ABC News Los Angeles. And happening now on KSET.com, Houston area rapper Travis Scott bringing back Astroworld for a third annual, excuse me, third annual festival. Those tickets go on sale today. So Scott initially kicked off the Astroworld Festival in 2018, more than 10 years after the Astroworld theme park closed its doors. The festival went on for a successful year two in 2018, but did not take place in 2020 due to the coronavirus pandemic. You can find more details about it on KSET.com. New concerns over the apps millions of kids depend on for remote learning. A report found 60% of school utility apps are sharing kids' data with third-party companies. That includes information like a student's contact list and even their location. Dell has issued a security patch for hundreds of computer models dating back to 2009. It closes a hole that allows cyber attackers to grab full control of the device. The patch covers nearly 400 models, including the company's latest laptops and some gaming. And Tender's new attempt to give you and a match something to talk about. The new Vibes features a short quiz that asks simple questions. Your answers will appear in profiles of anyone who's taken the same quiz. Tinder says tests like it increase likes and matches across the board. And good luck out there. It's a jungle. Yes, it is. Time now is 626 <laughs> and about 62 degrees right now. Still ahead next half hour, do you work the graveyard shift? Some of you do. If so, you may be at more at risk for things like the coronavirus. We'll tell you why. And at least two people are dead after a deadly plane crash in Mississippi. Next on GMSA, what we know so far from authorities. And outside with Trans Guide, roads look fantastic right now, at least on a couple of these camera shots. And look at the sunrise in the background of just this one shot at 410 and 151. We're going to take another look at that beautiful Wednesday morning sunrise coming up. Good morning. If you're just now tuning in, stop what you're doing and take a look at your screen, large and small. We have one of the best sunrises we've seen around here in a long, long time. Mike has more on our weather coming up. And a good morning to you. We've made it to Wednesday. It is May 5th. Happy Wednesday. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Thanks for joining us. And today's going to be a nice day if you want to celebrate outdoors. Oh, it's picture perfect out there. And it's not just the fact that we've got clear skies. We have pleasant temperatures. The humidity is picture perfect. Yep, that front came through yesterday because at this time yesterday it was still really humid. And mm -hmm. we had some of those uh, storms that brewed up to the north. But yeah, everything is just, you know, just fantastic out there. And it's kind of like We'll just sit there and stare at this picture for a couple of minutes because it's just fantastic. And yeah, the temperatures couldn't be better. We are at 60 right now, actually a couple of notches below uh, the normal, which you would expect this time of year. And that number, dew points at 52, which 
means a whole lot. Again, yesterday it was up in the low 70s, so the air is really dried out. We got a little bit of a breeze out of the northeast and uh, north to northeast. Moles on the high side still, although with the drier air in place, uh, my adventure, I guess, that should be going down. Of course, the updated reading is going to be coming out in about an hour or so. So clear, cool ish. We got some 50s in the hill country right now, some light uh, jackets, sweatshirts, pretty good idea. Sunny, low 80s later on today, and low humidity as well with a little bit of a breeze. And like we we're talking about, just if you're celebrating single tomorrow, if you're just getting outside, just enjoy it. Open up the windows. Great again tomorrow. Yeah, so this will continue. Friday sort of transition day, maybe a little more humidity, especially late in the afternoon. And then the weekend, it's going to be warm. It's going to be humid. We'll have some sprinkles in the mornings and uh, yeah, it's going to be really humid. Hopefully another chance of rain uh, to start off next week. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King and uh, it's been kind of kind of quite not any big deal this morning, right? No, not too many uh, big deals. We had the construction, of course, overnight on Loop 410, but that has uh, long been cleared. This is a look at US 90 at uh, Loop 410 there on the west side. Things looking fine. Can kind of see the uh, sun uh, coming out, but we do have some uh, delays here. Maybe you can see it uh, there in the distance of this picture and it's showing up on our maps here We're heading westbound on 90 toward loop 410 down to 19 miles per hour at, at one stretch there east of uh, military or excuse me west of military and then 48 miles per hour watch as you approach uh, loop 410 so that's just something to uh, keep in mind if your commute takes you west on uh, highway 90 this morning otherwise across uh, the area things looking uh, fairly uh, normal and quiet for for this time of morning not too many uh, incidents or crashes out there and that's reflected in our travel times coming inbound on US 90, 19 minutes, so fairly normal. Also 28 minutes coming in on I-10 from Seguin, can't get much better than that. 24 minutes on I-10 from Bernie. You can see uh, the rest there mostly in the green except for 281, which is still not too bad at 28 minutes. And we'll have another update coming up. Mark, Stephanie. Scary moments for one woman who had to be rescued following an overnight car accident. Happened around 3 this morning in the 100 block of Marcia Place. That's in Alamo Heights. Police tell us a woman who was driving an SUV hit a parked car, causing the woman's SUV to roll over. Alamo Heights firefighters had to pull the woman from the crashed SUV. She was not hurt. There's no word on what caused her to crash. Investigators are looking into a shooting that happened in front of a convenience store on the city's west side. Now, this happened just before 10 p.m. last night near Guadalupe and South Hamilton. Police say a man was sitting in front of that store when he was shot in the leg. That man was taken to the hospital and is expected to survive. No one has been arrested. New this morning, turning now to a deadly plane crash in Mississippi. At least two people are dead after a plane crashed into a home. Officials say it happened around 1130 last night in Hattiesburg, about 90 miles from Jackson. Officials have not said whether the victims were on the plane or in the home. It's unclear what caused the plane to crash. The FAA is investigating. Heavy rain, damaging winds have pummeled large parts of the south, causing tornadoes, sparking a flash flood emergency in Alabama and damaging homes from Texas all the way to Virginia. The storm has prompted boat rescues, toppled trees and power lines and raised the threat of flash flooding elsewhere. Storm Prediction Center says more than 11 million people in parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama and Tennessee, as well as corners of Arkansas and Georgia are still in an enhanced risk for the worst weather. The storms have been responsible for three deaths this week and more than 350,000 power outages from here in Texas to Maryland. More than 106 million people in the United States are now fully vaccinated against COVID-19, but the CDC shows uh, average daily pace of vaccinations is slowing. In spite of that, President Joe Biden is setting a bold new goal. CNN's Brett Conway reports. Perfect. Hold that. We're still vaccinating millions of Americans every day. Now, where do we go from here? President Joe Biden wants to see 70% of adult Americans with at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine by July 4th. He's focusing on three areas to increase vaccination rates. First, vaccinating kids 12 to 15 years old once there's an approved vaccine for them. Not only do we want to get it done in time for school, we want to get it done in time so kids can really enjoy their summer activities without having to worry, without having to wear masks. Now, vaccine advisors have scheduled an emergency meeting for next Wednesday as the FDA reviews the Pfizer vaccine for that age range. 
The second focus, making it easier to get vaccinated. You want to do a modification of strategy. Which means getting away from mass vaccination sites. And really putting in walk-in capabilities in 40,000 or so pharmacies throughout the country, getting mobile units going. The third focus, overcoming vaccine hesitancy by getting the word out and changing the narrative. I want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Ambitious for sure, but the White House says there's no plan B here. It's a stretch goal, but it's an achievable goal. It just needs to be easier. I think we're going to be able to do it. I mean, it's a challenging goal, but I think it's a doable goal. I'm Britt Conway reporting. And Facebook says it will announce today whether it's banning former President Trump permanently. The company's oversight board is making that determination. Facebook cited public safety as the reason when it indefinitely banned the former president four months ago. But critics say the social media giant should focus on free speech. A federal judge is ordering the Justice Department to release a memo that advised not prosecuting then-President Donald Trump. The March 2019 memo supported former attorney William Barr's opinion that Trump shouldn't face obstruction charges in matters investigated by special counsel Robert Mueller. The department argued the memo should be kept secret since it was only legal reasoning meant to help Barr make a decision. But a judge said she believed Barr and his advisors had already decided they wouldn't charge the president with a crime. She also said the memo was partly strategic planning, not legal reasoning, and therefore could be made public. First to close, last to reopen. Performance venues shuttered during the pandemic have been waiting for a lifeline for months. It's the topic of this week's episode of KSAT Explains. KSAT Explains stage set for a lifeline is available to stream on demand now. You can find it at ksat.com slash explains or the KSAT TV streaming app. And the city is now planning on opening six outdoor pools this weekend. The pools at Woodlawn, Southside Lions Heritage and Lady Bird Johnson's will be opened Saturday and Sunday from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. They will also be open Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday from 5 p.m. To 8 p.m. The San Pedro Springs and John F. Kennedy pools will only be open on Saturdays and Sundays from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. And in order to limit capacity, pre-registration will be required along with COVID screenings. We're going to have a full list of the protocols on our website at ksat.com. 638 right now it's 60 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. And just ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you why the night shift may be more vulnerable when it well actually the night shift workers are going to be more vulnerable when it comes to coronavirus or other illnesses. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. It's about 641 now. Night shift workers are up to three times more likely to be admitted to a hospital with coronavirus, according to a new study by researchers at Manchester University. Experts said those working irregular hours could be more at risk of infection because their sleep is disrupted, which damages the immune system and its ability to fight off pathogens. Past studies have regularly found that people who work shift patterns or work nights tend to be more sick. The study showed ship workers three times more likely to have severe COVID. The study was not able to explain exactly why the risk was higher for shift workers, but explained various reasons, including weakened immune system and an increased occupancy in workspaces. Experts say good quality sleep is crucial for long term health. Nearly 25 million Americans work night shifts. Today is May 5th, which means Cinco de Mayo. Every year on the 5th of May, Americans celebrate Mexican-American heritage and pride. U.S. Congress issued a proclamation back in 2005 calling on Americans to observe Cinco de Mayo. Most people do so by enjoying a Mexican-themed meal and drinks like tacos and margaritas. You can also explore Mexican culture, music, dance, and film. And if you're looking for a place to party responsibly for Cinco de Mayo, as seen on Case at 12's Texas Eats, La Gloria will be celebrating its 11th birthday today with live music and face painting at Burgoteca. La Gloria celebrates the rich and delicious street foods from interior Mexico, and the restaurant's margarita featuring El Jimador Tequila was also voted number one in San Antonio. So you can check out more about this on KSAT.com. As if any of us needed a reason to celebrate with tacos and margaritas, right? <laughs> 
right? <laughs> That's true. But right now, obviously, too early. Let's go ahead and check the roadways with Samuel King. Only word of caution here, be careful on the roads if you're going to do that. Have an alternative hmm. plan for sure, unless you're going to just stay at home. Uh, but looking at traffic times this morning, 28 minutes coming in on I-10 from Seguin, only four minutes from the Lavernia area and 30 minutes from the Floresville area. Things looking mostly okay uh, this morning, but we'll start here with some uh, good news. They had to do an emergency closure overnight at Loop 410 at FM 78 to do some bridge repair, but they were able to reopen that a few hours ago, so that's uh, good. But then just south of there, we're already starting to see our daily slowdown here on Loop 410 northbound at I-10 East down to 21 miles per hour at the interchange, so that's something to watch out for this morning. Looking downtown now, remember Commerce Street between Flores and Laredo is closed as part of a bond project there. They're in doing some street improvement sidewalks and the like, so it's going to be closed here for a few more days and actually through next week, and we'll have more on this project and what they're doing down there tomorrow morning on GMSA. Here's a look at Transguide. I-10 at Crossroads this morning looking good, as is 35 at Flores. Traffic building, but flowing well, guys. Did Sam just say if I read between the lines, party at his house? <laughs> he said tacos and margaritas again unless you stay at home, so therefore... Mm, I didn't hear I that exactly. Know. We'll talk to him about that in a little uh -huh. bit. That's I mean, we don't want to put you on the spot on the air, do we? Anyway, it is just an absolutely fantastic day. Nice day if you uh, have the afternoon, go for a little drive. You know, maybe head up 281, head up uh, the I-10 in the Hill Country, but 281 up there in Blanco. What a really cool picture. Swimming hole is ready. It's all full. You ever been up there to see that? That little uh, dam they have there is very cool looking. Thank you very much for the KSAT Connect picture. And speaking of beautiful pictures, sun is just about to squeeze over the horizon right there. Nothing but clear skies. One of the prettiest sunrises we've had, especially in weekday in a long time. 60 right now, low 50s hill country. And a light jacket, not a bad idea. Won't need it by this afternoon. Very low humidity, dew points, measure moisture in the atmosphere, down in the 50s and 40s. That's allowing temperatures to drop down. Not much of a breeze. We are below that threshold line of 60 in dew points. But but that's going to come back not until the weekend there, or maybe late Friday. So we've got today and tomorrow. And once again, dew points are about uh, 15, 20 degrees lower this morning than what they were at this time yesterday as that front was working its way on through here and finally brought in that drier air. So nothing going on, obviously, today, tomorrow, uh, Friday, a couple of clouds here and there, perhaps. And then with the flow coming in here more pronounced out of the southeast Friday, we are going to be seeing a couple of little sprinkles. Humidity is really going to come back into the picture Saturday morning. Uh, lots of clouds, a couple of little sprinkles around to start off the day on Saturday. Mixture of sunshine and clouds in the afternoon. Probably the same thing Sunday morning, even though this model doesn't depict it. I think there's going to be a couple little uh, sprinkles here and there, possibly. And then in the evening hours, now this is right now the only model that's, that's wanting to indicate anything as far as rain on Sunday, but uh, the atmosphere is going to be kind of unstable. So now I know it's still a few days off, but we're going to have to kind of keep an eye on things because if something decides to kind of blow up on Sunday, it could get fairly strong, although rain chances as of right now are not that great. Similar situation to what we had a couple of days ago where we had that in the atmosphere is very unstable and those thunderstorms decided to sort of blow up. So it'll just be something we have to watch out on Sunday, Monday, a little bit better chance for a couple of showers around here and then also on Tuesday. And also that I mentioned on the weekend is going to be really humid and hot, especially on Sunday, 73 degrees, sunny skies, fantastic today and then 83 for a high temperature, sunny, breezy. Just again, enjoy it. Um, enjoy celebrating Cinco de Mayo outside or at Sam's house, whichever the case is. And then uh, 58 tomorrow, <laughs> starting off once again, and we'll get up into the mid 80s. Couple of clouds Friday, very pleasant temperatures. And notice the difference in the low Saturday morning, 65 degrees, 70 on Sunday. That moist air doesn't allow things to drop down quite as much. It's going to be in the upper 80s and even mid 90s over the weekend. And uh, some morning sprinkles. Beautiful Mother's Day, though. It will be hot and humid and some rain starting off next week. In Samuel's defense, he is not committed to anything, but we sure have. No. We've committed for him. So. <laughs> You're Outside welcome, on Sam. the patio, right, Samuel? Two words, Oof. buddy. Um, <laughs> Rooftop pool. Boom. <laughs> really? We're, we're in. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are. <laughs> 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 you talk no. about 
put him on the spot. Yeah, exactly. I mean, but you guys have more space. So. Oh. That's, that is true. That is true. Okay. I just have an apartment. You guys have the whole. Okay. Bring chips. Here we, we agreed we were not going to put him on the spot. Uh, and then, boy, did and we put him on the, really spot. on the spot. Yeah, I'll see That's okay. We'll, <laughs> and once again, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. Right now it's 648, yeah. about 60 degrees. And over the past year, you may have noticed some areas of your home that no longer fit your lifestyle. Tomorrow on GMSA, we have some tips on how to upgrade your home to better fit your needs. Outside with Live Camp, today is the perfect day to get outside with the kids, go for a walk, have a nice meal outside, pack a picnic. A look at that sunrise. More to come right here on GMSA. Glad you're with us. In today's Tech Fights, new concerns over the apps millions of children depend on for remote learning. A report found 60% of school utility apps are sharing kids' data with third-party companies. That includes information like a student's contact list and even their location. Dell has issued a security patch for hundreds of computer models dating back to 2009. It closes a hole that allows cyber attackers to grab full control of the device. The patch covers nearly 400 models, including the company's latest laptops and some gaming devices. Finally, Tinder's new attempt to give you and a match something to talk about. The new Vibes feature is a short quiz that asks simple questions. Your answers will appear in profiles of anyone who has taken the same quiz. Tinder says tests show it increases likes and matches across the board. One question, are you 20 minutes early to places or 10 minutes late? Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the fight against the coronavirus. President Biden has set a new goal aiming to have 70 percent of adults get at least one dose of a vaccine by the 4th of July. How he plans to achieve that and Pfizer's new vaccine timeline for young children. The director of the National Institutes of Health, Dr. Francis Collins, is live only on GMA this morning. A search is underway after San Antonio police say a person opened fire at a home on the city's east side. Now San Antonio crime stoppers need your help in bringing that person to justice. It happened at Semlinger Road and Lord Road near 410 back on April 8th. Investigators say it was just before 5 that morning when someone shot at the home several times, which was occupied with adults and children. Investigators spoke to a 47-year-old woman who was inside the house at the time of the shooting. She believes her home was targeted, but it's not clear why. That person who shot at the home was reported to be armed with an assault rifle. Thankfully, this didn't end with any injuries. Crime stoppers are asking for information that can lead to any arrest. Now, crime stoppers may also offer up to a $5,000 reward for any information that can lead to any arrest. You can contact 210-224-7867. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, a Defenders investigation found that while CPS Energy has forked over hundreds of thousands of dollars for a customized weather platform, they pay a college student a nominal fee to use it. Dylan Collier joins us live to debrief his story today at 9. Also at 9, Katie's Science Lab is going back to the basics with a classic science experiment, dropping Mentos into a bottle of Diet Coke. That will be fun. Katie Blake explains the science behind that reaction today at 9 after Good Morning America. We've had a pretty good morning commute so far. Let's see if that's the case as we wrap up the early morning newscast. Samuel. Thank you very much, Mark and Stephanie. Traffic times still look fairly okay, except for a little bit of an increase there on 281 southbound from Belverde to downtown. This is 281 at Bassey, and there is a stalled vehicle uh, there, so just watch out for that heading southbound again on 281. Still have this slowdown on the west side here, 90 westbound at Loop 410 down to 12 miles per hour. Also some slowdown to military. And Mike, we also have our slowdown on the east side, Loop 410 at I-10. What a fantastic morning. We're at 60 here in town. But look at that low 50s in the hill country. May want a uh, light little jacket, something like that. We're going to make it up to 83 for a high temperature today, but we're just going to leave you with this beautiful picture. It's going to be gorgeous again tomorrow. A little bit more humidity on Friday and very warm and humid over the weekend. But let's just concentrate on that and take a moment and just uh, soak it in. Guys, I think it's going to be a good day today. I it's think so, too. It's going to be a wonderful too. day. Roll down the windows today. <laughs> Samuel, Mike, thank you very much. And thank you for joining us. Enjoy that day. Enjoy some time outdoors, and we'll see you back here at 9.